Hey guys, how are you doing today? Welcome back to my channel. This is the Little Bean and Me podcast channel. I am your host, Kayleen, and I am the principal fiber artist and yarn dyer behind LittleBeanLovesYarn.com and Little Bean Crochet on Etsy. You can find me on most social media as Little Bean Crochet uh, and on Facebook, I think, as Little Bean Crochet Shop. But as always, I put the information here on screen for you. Uh, welcome back if you are a new subscriber, and welcome if you're brand new. I hope you really enjoy this podcast. I attempt to do this weekly. I hope my focus is okay. I attempt to do this weekly, but sometimes you know the season tis the season school is out today is the last day of school uh for cecilia so she's already back in the house so we are filming in the office again um but yeah this is a small podcast about knitting and spinning crocheting and dyeing yarn and just pretty much anything crafty that i'm up to in my life so uh welcome to everybody so wow i can't believe it's the last day of school for cecilia it's already done we got our school pictures in. It's so cute. Um, but time really has flown by for us this year, so I feel like it's all kind of hitting home. Um, but let's get into everything because I have a lot of things to share. The last uh, podcast I did was a couple of weeks ago. The last video I filmed was uh, last week. I showed you my sock machines over here, uh, but I showed you on my circular sock machine the way that I've been making these little baby hats, so I want to show you that as well. Uh, okay, so let's just get into some finished objects, and let's talk about the little elephant in the room up here. Uh, I did cast this shawl off. Uh, if you remember a few podcasts ago, I had cast on the shawl for Cecilia. I dyed some yarn with her over Easter, and it is in um, just dyed with Easter egg dyes, and she picked all the colors, and I decided I was going to knit something for her. I do have a lot of yarn left over, but I decided to cast off where I was last time, so so I'll just show you this now. Everything seems to be coming very true to color. So here is the shawl. It is the um, Ardent Shawl Pattern by Yanina Calio. And this is a fingering weight shawl pattern, but this is done in DK weight. So I will show you, ooh, it changed it to this lovely blue color. Um, show you kind of up close. So it's a garter stitch, sorry. It's a garter stitch shawl and it's basically just garter with eyelet detailing um bands of eyelet detailing so there's a row of eyelets a few rows of garter eyelets garter eyelets garter so there was supposed to be one more repeat but i thought that this was large enough for me if i were to wear this it would be kind of like a scarf uh, or a cowl kind of thing but for Cecilia this goes all the way down to her bottom if she has it over her shoulders the point of the triangle is down to her bottom so um, I figured this was big enough for her and I would just be done with it because I wanted to cast on another project so I'm going to show you now some whips uh, I still have my crochet bag my raffia bag is still going on. I have the class uh, tomorrow, actually. Uh, so if you're in the Marblehead area and you want to drop in for a quick crochet class in the morning, I am teaching at Marblehead Knits um, a raffia bag class. So it is at 11 o'clock. <laughs> It's either at 10.30 or 11, so um, if you're in the area and you want to stop by for a class and say hi, uh, you can come on down. I think it's 15, 15 bucks. But, um, but yeah, that's still going on. I, I just started the bag. I didn't want to finish it because I wanted to have it in progress for the class so that I could show some of the techniques I use when I crochet in the round. Uh, but that's the only crochet whip I have. And then I have two knitting whips. One is brand new because I cast this off, and then one you've seen before, which is my um, my socks that I was knitting for Tyler, and I made some progress, so I want to show you. All right, so let's start with the old whip. So this you guys may have seen. I think I showed it on the podcast, but I started knitting a pair of socks for Tyler. This is the feathers bag that uh, Lynn and I did in collaboration. We did the Fleur and Feathers kits, so they are, um, it was a self-striping yarn. I, so we still have a couple kits available in each of our shops, so if you if you think you missed out, you didn't. Uh, but we have some. I'm going to mark them down. So these feather bags, which are perfect for socks, I think. Um, a, pair, a sock yarn, which is Fleur. I'll show you. Uh, this is the yarn that goes with the bag, so it would come with the self-striping yarn, the sock bag, and a mini skein for heels, toes, and cuffs. As you can see, we have a nice visitor in the back of the video today. Um, 
so yeah, let me show you these socks. Last time you saw me, I think I just had a cuff. You can come look. <laughs> um, but I have now started turning the heel. So this is in the colorway Rapture. This is a Jinx Yarns colorway. And I knit my socks two at a time. Excuse me, Cece, you can't come over my lap, okay? And I started turning the heel on my first sock. So I am a, I'm making my return rows on the short row heel. I'm doing a fish lips kiss heel. And I'm at the same point on this sock. Oh, you're going to show the yarn? Cece wants to show some yarn. We'll show that yarn a little later, okay? Okay. <laughs> okay? All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. You're showing the yarn. That's beautiful. Thank you. Okay, can you put that away? This yarn is going to like a rainbow. It's short. It's oh. pink. Okay, good. Thank you. We'll see you later. I can put the clock right here. Okay, you can put the clock there. It's off. We have to plug it in. <laughs> so, my little helper. Okay, so Jinx Yarns in the Rapture colorway. Um, two at a time, 60 stitches on size one on my Addy Turbo Rockets. I really love this colorway. The yarn has been wonderful to knit with. This is on her BFL base, and it feels very sturdy. Feels soft but sturdy, and I really like that about this. So I think Tyler, Tyler is really going to like these socks. Um, but yeah, I'm very excited. So I'm making my return rows. I stopped in the middle, which I don't usually like to do, but in the return rows, it's pretty easy to just pick up and continue where we've gone. So that is my first whip. And my second whip is in this bag, which you haven't seen in a while. This is my You So-and-So bag made by Sarah. Um, I think her name is Sarah, if I remember correctly. Um, but it's just a forest type of bag. I think this is her medium, medium size. Um, very roomy. This was housing a shawl that I had put away forever. <laughs> the, um, uh, what was it called? I can't remember now. It was the one that I was doing in a mauve and a gray. Oh, I don't remember the name of the shawl. Oh, well. Whatever. I don't remember the name of the shawl. It was one that I was working on a while ago and I used the wrong size needles and I fell out of love with the project and blah blah blah. It doesn't matter. It's gone. It's gone. But this is a new whip project and I'm very excited to announce that I am knitting it from my hand spun. So this is the hand spun that I made um, maybe a month or two ago. This was from the Galactic Adventure colorway by AJHC Wools in her 5050 uh, merino silk blend. I think it's 18.5 micron merino. It's super soft. I ended up with about a sport weight yarn and I wanted to just do, sorry, I wanted to just do a one skein project and this was going to be a gift for my my dad's wife, Barbara. So Barbara, if you watch this, which I don't think you do, but if you do, please skip ahead. I'll put a timestamp here for you to skip ahead. This is a gift for you. Um, so I have been working on a shawl. I cast this on a few days ago. Uh, Tuesday or Wednesday? Tuesday. I cast this on Tuesday because I wanted to start knitting. So this is the shawl that I've been working on. It is a semicircular shawl and it is called, I am having a brain fart today. It is, oh, I'm just gonna have to put it on the screen because I can't remember. It's a semicircular shawl. It has a little bit of eyelet lace work. So if you can see here, it might be hard to see because we have some color changes. We can thank my neighbors for revving their engine. Um, but you can see the colors are striping up really nicely. We have this nice gradation between each color. It's really hard to show right now because it is legitimately, there we go, I started in the center and I've been working my way out, but it's legitimately going to fall off my needles if I stretch it to its maximum capacity. Um, so I'm working the shawl on the needles that I had that shawl on that I cast off. These are my Carbons Interchangeables, US size 8. So I wanted it to be really drapey. I didn't want to have to aggressively block it. And I knew I was going to be able to get a pretty consistent stitch definition just based on the way that I spun this yarn. Um, this shawl has been a very easy knit. 
It is, is a stockinette shawl, so the front is knits, the wrong side is pearls, and then the lace detailing here, you know, it's just like any other lace detail. It's yarn a series of yarn overs and knitting stitches together and things like that. So just as long as I'm paying attention. The only thing that I would say is in the lace section, I have found it because I really hate knit two together. Now this shawl is the shawl that was in this bag before. If you remember this shawl, I can't remember the name of the shawl. Why can I not do it? And I absolutely loathe, loathe the knit two together parts because somehow knitting two together, it was just too painful. And I think it had to do with needle size. Now needle size has nothing to do with this because this yarn is far finer than the needles. But I found that on, I believe the right side of the work, I knit through the back loop. No, front through the front loop. And the back side of the work, I've been knitting through the back loop. And it's been giving an interesting texture. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this. But I don't think it takes away um, from the shawl in any way or makes it look any different than what it should be. But it's making my life so much easier because for some reason, knitting it through the front loop on both sides makes one of the sides so incredibly frustrating that I just don't want to knit on it and I really like the shawl and I'm very excited to give it. So this is going to be the small version of that shawl and so it will be like a shawlette where it will come over and it should come down to about here. So it'll be a nice um, shawlette size. Here's the right side. I think it's coming along beautifully. I'm loving these colors. It makes me so happy makes me so happy. So Galactic Adventure is well underway. I'm very excited for that. All right, so the last thing that I wanted to show you that was, it's actually a finished object, but it is the hats that I've been working on. So if you guys have been following along on Instagram, as, as I always say every episode, you can always find me on Instagram, and that's where I post the most. Um, if you're following me there, then you'll know that I've been working on these small hats. So it started out as kind of an experiment because I wanted to work something else on my sock machine uh, besides socks because I don't feel like my skills with the machine are high enough to make really wearable socks, socks that I'm going to enjoy, and I don't want to um, use up all my yarn that I've purchased for my own socks on socks that I'm not going to want to wear. So I've been practicing with the machine and I decided to try and make baby hats because the gauge of the machine, you're able to adjust it and you can make, on a 60 stitch cylinder, you can make a nice newborn size hat. And I also have a 72 stitch cylinder so I'm able to make a little bit of a wider hat, a little bit of a taller hat, so it's more of like a three to six month size. So I decided to try and knit up a sock blank because I wanted to show everybody the process from beginning to end on how I like to work with a sock blank. I have not done two at a time off of a sock blank yet. I'm not sure if I'm going to like it because I didn't like knitting off of a single one when I had one, which I'll show you the hats that I made from that sock blank. Um, and I wanted to show you what it looks like kind of after blocking, even after soaking and relaxing the yarn, what it looks like after blocking, uh, because I know everybody always asks, they always ask, everybody asks me, what does a sock blank look like knit up? What is it going to look like? What are the colors going to do? And, um, you know, it's kind of like a little surprise. You know, you dye out this whole entire sock blank and it just ends up being, you know, this adventure you go on where you go from color to color to color and you see how things move along. So let me show you that now. See my little, my little pyramid of yarn over here. So let me pull this box over. So I have an entire box that is getting very full of baby hats. Um, so the first hat that I made was this one. This was out of some Cascade Heritage Wave, and this was on the 60 stitch cylinder. Now that's a little bit of a heavier weight fingering yarn, so the hat came out a bit smaller than my other ones. So it's almost like a preemie size, like preemie to small newborn. But inside, I did a folded brim. So I knit up 30 rows and then I fold it in half. So there are 15 rows, um, 15 rows in the brim. Then I started knitting up some extra yarn that I had from previous dyes. So this is on the Yak Sock. This was a Pygmy Puff colorway. It was a bright, I still have the colorway. It's in my local yarn shop, but this was on the Yak, so it came out more muted. Uh, but it was done with a fluorescent pink. 
and it dyed up and it knit up in these stripes, which was really interesting. And then this is latte. So I had a couple of uh, sets of pumpkin spice latte left over. So I wanted to knit up the hats, pumpkin spice latte, so you can see how the colors knit up. So this is pumpkin spice latte. So I knit up some of those into baby hats. These are all the newborn size hats. Again, it's really interesting to see how they come together. Um, to show you a little bit of a difference. <laughs> okay. This setup is just crazy. Okay, so here's the size difference. As you can see, the larger hat is much taller. They both have a 15 row brim, but the width is different by about an inch and the height is different by about an inch and a half. So it really does make a difference, the cylinder size. So this is a 72 stitch hat, and this is a 60 stitch hat. So this is newborn, and then this is like a three to six month size hat, both in pumpkin. Um, all right, so the other colorway that I dyed up, that I had some left over here, you'll see I'm gonna make another hat, but this was Exploding Tardis. I had pretty much here, a single skein. I had, I still have a couple at my local yarn shop, but this was part of a kit that sold out, and then I just shifted the yarn over to my local yarn shop, but Exploding Tardis, this is a pooling colorway, so it repeats, it looks like stripes, micro striping. Um, it's very cool looking. Let's see, I had some tension issues here, you can see, but otherwise it came out great. Then let's look at the sock blank. So I took a rainbow sock blank and I decided to knit it up, excuse me, I decided to knit up a rainbow sock blank to see how the colors would shift. So these are the hats that came out of the sock blank going from red red to orange, orange to yellow, yellow to green, green to blue, and then blue into the purple section so you can see inside. So these I had soaked. I didn't soak it for very long, so I soaked the, the yarn. I undid it from the blank. I soaked it to relax it, then I hung it to dry overnight. And so I didn't soak it for very long, so the, there's still, you know, a little bit of inconsistencies in the stitch work because of the kinks in the yarn. But to be honest, they're baby hats. Um, they're going to be worn by an infant for who knows how long, and then either passed on or donated. So. Uh, I think the colors come up really nicely. Sorry about that, Cece's playing toys. Uh, the colors pull up really nicely. You have this nice speckling. Um, even the areas of the blank that are white, you know, it really is not like huge sections of white. It's just changes in the, the value of the color. So even the lighter sections, they're not exactly white. They're more of a light green. <laughs> okay. So even the sections that are lighter, they're not exactly... Um, white they're like the lighter versions of the darker colors so here's the blue to purple and as you can see it's nicely speckled and variegated it i feel like it's a really cool look um so this is on a hat this is not on a sock so it'll look different on a sock or in a shawl but in general, you're going to see this like flecking and flashing of color, speckling of color. This one happened to have a nice pool and it kind of like stripes all the way up the hat, which is interesting. You can see how the color changes gradually from one to the other. This one has to be my favorite though, the one that I was holding, this one I was holding up. Um, the blue into, the green into the blue, where it goes from this really vibrant yellow green changing over slowly into a blue color. So, anyway. So I did the same thing with my uh, speckled unicorn blank, and you can see the difference here. 
the color it's much more sparse and sporadic because that's how the, the blank was dyed. But you can see the changes into the different colors. So this had yellow, black, pink, and purple. I mean, yellow, gray, pink, and purple. Yes, yes, <laughs> yellow, gray, pink, purple. Let's use brain cells for a minute. Uh, but you can see flecking and flashing, speckling, some striping. So yeah, I, I think they come up really, really well. I really enjoy knitting with sock blanks that way, and I enjoy relaxing the yarn because it makes it a little more pleasurable for me based on the way that I knit if I'm hand knitting, and also on the machine if I relax the yarn, it allows for a much cleaner uh, finished product. All right, and then the first blank that I had dyed, I hated it. I It was too pale. The color didn't really speak to me. It was a little washed out. I was really experimenting with uh, I was experimenting with dye concentrations and the techniques that I now use to dye sock blanks. And so I was like, I'll just save this one for myself and I'll just knit myself a pair of socks from it or put it into a shawl or whatever. And I ended up not liking it and it just sat in a drawer. So doing this hat project has made me kind of revisit it. So what I did was I kicked it up. Well, I rescanned it, soaked it, dried it, caked it up, and then I started knitting hats with it. And this is what came out. This is so cool. <laughs> this is just by happenstance that it cools up this way into these stripes. This is what the first hat from the skein looked like. And then this was the second hat. So these are both the larger size. So it, it, it kind of looks like a cloudy sky. This is the yarn out of the blank into a cake. So it's it's really, it doesn't look like much of anything. It literally was the palest, least saturated looking thing ever. <laughs> and I absolutely did not like it at all. I'm like, oh, this is not very nice. I'm not gonna sell it. I'm just gonna keep it for posterity. Maybe I'll knit it up later. And then so I decided to knit it up as hats and holy moly, it came out so cute. I think these are great. So I made them in the big size and then I'm going to use the yarn for the smaller size as well. But you can see, like you cannot even tell how this is going to knit up. It is literally just a pale blue with flecks of green. I think that's what it looks like. Hey, another visitor. She's back. She's back. I never see this yarn. You want to show that yarn? Well, okay, Mommy's in the middle of showing hats, so I have to move my things. One minute, one minute, one minute, one minute. So what are you showing? The yarn. As soon as yarn is yarn, it's always good, always good. What color is it? It's brown and white. It's brown and white? What it's color is that? Seen yarn. It's more than brown and white. It's so. What color is it? Blue. This is not blue. <laughs> what color is it? Yeah, yeah. It's yellow and what? Keep your ball. All right. Mommy will be done in just a minute, you okay? You yes, soon. Is Shannon now? This is making the sound. Yeah, that's the microphone. The microphone when I see up with the camera. Mm hmm John, I like. So we've had a bit of an interruption and that's okay, <laughs> but where were we? Okay, we were showing hats. So I hated that sock blank and I decided I kind of like it now because you never know how things are going to knit up until you actually knit it up. And especially something like a sock blank, you can kind of see how the colors are going to work out, but you never know exactly what it's going to look like in your final project until you start knitting on it, which I think is really interesting and I think it's kind of fun. It's like a little present that you're unwrapping as you're going along. So. I took more colors that I had sitting around that either weren't moving or were colors that I was like, oh no, I think I'm going to over dye that. So there's one color I didn't listen to the shop and I didn't show because I really hated it. <laughs> so there are some colors that I dye. I'm just like, I 
can't even. Like it just goes in the over dye pile and then I eventually over dye it, make it a one of a kind, you know, or I'll figure out something where I'm going to put a, a different color on it and make it a one of a kind. Um, this is one of those colors. So I absolutely hated it. This was supposed to be part of a dialogue and I, I just hated everything about it. So I didn't like the way the colors played together. I didn't like how it speckled. I didn't like anything about this color. You can see like the dye tie is still on it. So I decided, well, why don't I try and make it into a baby hat and maybe I can use it that way. And if the color looks nice when it knits up, you know, great. And if it doesn't, maybe I can donate it or maybe I can dye over on the hat itself and that'll be interesting. <sighs> so I hated it. I hated it. I hated it. I'm still, I'm changing my mind about it because this is how it knit up. Again, when you're knitting, you have a color, really you can never tell until you start to knit it up. I like it now. <laughs> I kind of like it. <laughs> uh, so it's not named. I'm going to pop the rest of the skeins in the shop this Saturday as part of update, but they're just one of a kind. I didn't write down the recipe. Uh, but it's kind of patriotic. It's a little speckly, red, white, blue. It's got pinks and peach and mauve, gray, blue. I don't know what I'm going to name it, but again, you never know how something is going to knit up until you knit it up. So do not judge a book by its cover or a skein by how it looks. If you like the colors that are in it, you may like the way that it knits up. All right, so then... I had this color, which was called, I put it in the shop, it's called Dark Magic, which is this, and it was just a one-of-a-kind set that I had done, which is grays and blue, green. It was uh, just an experimental color. It was something that I threw together thinking, I'm not going to write this down. I have a few extra skeins of yarn. I had one everyday sock, two sparkle, and a yak. So that's what it got dyed on. So I took the everyday sock and I said, well, I'll just knit this up into hats and this is what it looks like. So I have a couple large size hats and a couple smaller size hats. And I think I can make one more small size hat from what's left. Um, the small size hats take just under 20 grams and the larger size hats take just over 20 grams. But yeah, it has some turquoise, yellow, dark grays and blues came up very interesting. I, I'm kind of digging it. So I made a few hats of that. And then I took some other skeins yesterday. I've been very busy with these. Um, this is Professor Sprout. This is listed in the shop. I think I have one skein of this left. Again, a one of a kind. This was my first attempt at dyeing what is now known as Cunning, which is the Slytherin inspired colorway, just like Courage or Gryffindor, but this did not come out right, and so this, I also didn't write the recipe down for this, so this is just the one of a kind I called Professor Sprout. It's green, but it has lighter and darker values of green. I think a few different shades of green. Gray, came out nice. Very neutral, speckly, and I think worked nice for cute hats. Um, then this is Lav Love, Lavender Brown. Um, a bit delicate, it's got navy, mauve, and yellow. And this is the almost lab lab. So the yellow tone is not exactly the right color, but it still speaks the colorway. It's not, um, I don't think it's any different than what it would normally be, but it's a little more um, delicate, delicately speckled. And then this one, <laughs> this color is the color. Oh, so this is the red, white, and blue one. I didn't show it before. Caked up. Picked up really cool. So this color, this is Ron Weasley. And I hated this color in the pan. This was another one that I was like, I don't like this at all. This is what it looks like caked up. And so once I got it out of the pan, dried, I was like, holy moly, I like this color. So I decided to see how it would knit up, and holy moly, I love this color even more. <laughs> Here it is. This is Ron, and it is just speckled orange and blue, kind of rusty colors in there for his red hair, and I absolutely love it. 
So one one and love love are meant to be a complementary pair. I have an interruption again. Yes, Cecilia. I feel like the level of interruption is rivaling when I used to do podcasts back in the day, like almost like almost one year ago. I'm almost at my one year pod anniversary, and. I was doing my podcast and both kids were awake and in the other room and they would just constantly come out, come out, come out. And like Tucker was so small, he was really like a very little baby, but like Cecilia used to come out and ask for snacks all the time and just come to bother me. <laughs> so it's like what a difference a year makes and why I usually film when she's at school. So anyway, so Ron and Lav are meant to be a nice little complimentary pair where you can fade them into each other, it would be interesting and fun. Um, plus it kind of like that couple thing so oh let me mention this um Clarissa Beth over at Crochet Cake she's doing a summer of love cow so where you are knitting or I don't know if it's crocheting too but you're using yarns or um, a pattern or something that's incorporating like a couple so that's another reason why I dyed this was to kind of go along with that theme I planned to do more but of course life gets in the way of things. So if I can dye more couples, I will. But if you're interested, you should go check out her channel. She's doing that craft along now. I think it's already begun. It began like a week ago. <laughs> so um, anyway, so those are the hats that I've been working on. I've been keeping very busy with that stuff. And then this week I also dyed a ton. So last week was a little bit of a lighter dye week for me. I didn't really have a lot of inspiration going on. I didn't have a lot of time. You know, we're getting down to the end of the school year. And then obviously today is the last day of school. So it's it's just been insane. Um, so let me show you the work that I did this week in dyeing. And I'll show you the colors that are going up for tomorrow's shop update. Okay, so the first color I'm showing you, I've already showed you recently, this uh, color was that one-of-a-kind kind of red, white, and blue color. It was part of a dialogue, but I didn't like how it came out, but I like how it knits up, so I'm going to put it in the shop, and if you're interested in it, I'll put a picture of how it knits up so people can see, but this will be in the shop tomorrow. Okay, so the next color that's going in the shop tomorrow is the Cunning colorway. So this is a Slytherin inspired colorway. It is greens and grays. That is the main palette here. So I dyed up a set in Everyday Sock, which came out great, I think. And then I dyed it up on singles. So this is Simple Sock. And I also dyed it up on Yak Sock. And then I also wanted to show the difference between Cunning and Wormtail. Uh, I do have, this is the last skein of Wormtail I have from my last dye up, but I want to show you the difference between them. Uh, I think these would work really cool together in a fade for sure. They do share a green tone, the darkest green tone in it, but uh, Wormtail has a much different feel than Cunning. So that's the difference, if you're wondering what the difference is. I just happen to have these right next to each other. Okay, so the next color is Beau So I did, again, on Everyday Sock. I dyed up a full dye lot of it on Everyday Sock. And then I also dyed it up on Singles, Simple Sock, and on Yak Sock. So I had a whole bag of yak, so I had a bag of the singles and I had a bag of yak, and so I decided, in, because I couldn't do four of each, I would do two and two in the pan at the same time. So I dyed the yak and the singles at the same time. So I have four every day, two yak, two singles. And I did plan to do sparkle on all of these, but I just didn't have time this week. Okay, so the next colorway is one of my favorites. This is Ron, one one, Ron Weasley. I dyed a whole lot on every day. Oops. This is another every day. So this is on everyday sock. And two on simple sock and two on yuck. So it came up really cool. Right, as Cece likes to say on yuck. That is how she calls yak. She calls yak yuck. But it's not yuck. It's actually really soft and really cuddly. So I enjoy it. Okay, so I have here, this is a one of a kind. 
it was meant to be courage, but cur it didn't, um, I don't think my pan was hot enough when I was speckling. So it almost looks like Fox Rising, but it's just a one of a kind colorway. Here it is on Simple Sock. And then again on Yak Sock. It didn't quite come up the same way as that Courage comes up. So I'm just gonna put it in there as one of a kind. But it's Gryffindor colors. It's, it's that kind of crimson red with the warm yellow. So then the next colorway I have is Luna. So the batch of Luna that's in the shop right now is almost Luna. Um, I realized after I posted it and I'm looking at the pictures, I'm like, why doesn't that look right? Well, when I dyed it, I used the wrong yellow color. So it's almost Luna, just like Lav is almost Lav. Uh, but this is the correct color for Luna. So it is the cool tone pink, warm yellow, and a blue violet, which kind of breaks blue. So I had it on. I have it on everyday sock. So I did a whole lot on everyday sock. And a whole lot on simple sock. So instead of doing, in, instead of doing this color two on yak two on simple, I decided to do four simple for this and use two yak and two simple for that one of a kind, which was supposed to be courage, but it's not. So here's Luna. She's so pretty. She's she's just so pretty. I just love that color. All right, and then the last color is prongs. So we have prongs on every day. such a cool color. I was a little burnt out on dyeing it to be honest. <laughs> um, when when I did all those kits I was like I'm not dyeing prongs for a while so I'm, now I'm over it. But um, here is two on simple and two on yak. So I will have all of those games listed up tomorrow at one o'clock for shop update. Um, one o'clock Eastern. So if you're unsure about where to find me, uh, if you click up in this corner here, this is the iCard and I will always have my shop link up here uh, for you. And um, I am in Boston or in the Boston area. So if you're ever curious what time one time 1 p.m. Eastern is, you can always Google what time is it in Boston now. That way you can judge the time difference because I know not everybody does daylight savings time. Uh, this time of year. I at least know Arizona doesn't. So, and I think, I feel like there are other places in the world that don't do daylight savings the way we do it. So, anyway, so the shop update is 1 p.m. Eastern tomorrow at littlebeancrochet.etsy.com. Um, and I always announce any shop updates or listings in Instagram first before I list them. So, if you're following me on Instagram, then you'll know exactly when I post things up to Etsy. I did a lot of dyeing this week. I still have to label all of those things. I had to figure out where I'm going to put it because the shelves that are behind this monitor here are just stocked full, just absolutely full. So yeah, so those sh those shelves are just, they're just absolutely stocked full. So I don't even know where I'm going to put these things. Um, behind the camera, you guys can't see it, but on the elliptical machine that is in this room is hanging 20 skeins of bare sparkle that I haven't dyed. And then I have 10 skeins over here of yak silk. Um, I got a special order request. I got a special order in. So uh, one person, they organized a group buy of a, of a huge amount of yak silk yarn. And so I jumped in after they had already done it because I was not even aware that they were doing it. But it's for a heavier lace weight. Um, 50% yak, 50% silk. It's a bit of a softer twist uh, yarn, but it's absolutely beautiful. So I'm excited to dye up some tonals on that, I think. Not sure if I would do speckled colors um, just because it's lace. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Can I say that I'm happy it's Friday? Because I'm really happy it's Friday. Um, last weekend, Cece had her concert for school her little spring concert which was so adorable i haven't watched back the footage yet because they put up they just sent us the private link for the the video they posted on youtube um it's unlisted so only if you have the link can you watch it 
and it's just I can't wait to see what the video looks like because she was absolutely so much more adorable in it than she was for the fall concert because I think she was or a holiday concert she was much more um into it you know she was much more comfortable with her friends with the songs that they were singing so that's super exciting um next week we go to Storyland for the first time we have never been or at least I've never been to Storyland. I've lived in New England my whole life, and no, I've never been to Storyland. Um, but it's in New Hampshire, and so we are going away next Thursday through Sunday. Uh, so I'm not sure if there will be a podcast next week. If there is, it'll probably be on Wednesday, or I'll do a smaller video, um, maybe if I finish something, or if I have a dye update to show you some skeins. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to take the kids there. I think Cece will have a really fun time. Tucker, he's going to be a little tougher because he's a he's a midday napper, so we'll have to try and coordinate efforts on nap and park time. So, um, yeah, so... Oh, I didn't show you these things. I didn't show you these things. So, if you follow me on Instagram, as everybody probably already does anyway, but I got my business cards in. So these are my new, this is my new business card. So the front has my logo and business information, and the back I put Luna because Luna is one of my most favorite colors that I've dyed. Um, but yeah, so when you get an order, when you place an order with me, you're going to be getting one of my new business cards, which is great. I haven't had any business cards to give out in like eight months because my business contact information wasn't um, accurate. And I also got new labels. So these are my new labels. So they're not going to look any different because my logo is still the same. They're just slightly larger. And so I'm putting them on my skeins a little differently than what I was doing before. It would help if I didn't stack them one inside the other. Um, so I'm stacking, I'm putting them on the skeins now at the bottom. Um, as if I were going to hang these on a grid wall, just in preparation for any shows. Just starting to do my yarn this way instead of the other way. So if I have to hang my yarn at shows, I'm already putting my yarn labels on the right way. This isn't the right color. This, this was on my Professor Sprout um, yarn, but this is just to show you what it looks like. This is, this is um, Fleur. So I like it. I think, you know, it's a little bigger than what my my labels used to be but I don't think it's anything out of the ordinary it's as small as I could have gotten it and I also still got them very long so I got them as long as they were before which was 11 inches because I used to print them on my own paper um, just in case I have to cake the yarn I can still do a full band wrap around a cake so yeah so that's it my new, my new label all right, well, my battery is flashing at me, which means it's time to end. <laughs> um, I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast. I hope I remembered to say everything that I was supposed to say <laughs> in this podcast, because I never use notes, and I probably should use notes. But um, yeah, I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. I hope you are enjoying the beginning of summer here, and um, yeah, I just wish you guys all the best, and keep crafting, keep smiling, keep happy. Peace out, friends. Bye.